60 minutes overtime. Last year, I and a team went to Iran to interview the president, Ibrahim Raisi. Sir, thank you. I'm Leslie. We met President Raisi Tuesday at the presidential compound in Tehran for his first interview with a Western reporter. I wore a headscarf. I'd been to Iran several times, and I knew that there was a law that you had to wear it. Hello. They would have arrested me if not. Daily uprisings, mostly led by women, have been taking place for more than a week since the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini while in custody of the morality police. That happened while we were there, but we didn't know it till we left. If you want to hike somewhere. This week on 60 Minutes, we met with a woman, Masi Alinajad, who's an Iranian activist living in Brooklyn. She is part of this movement to encourage women back in Iran to take their headscarves off. There was no need for Mahsa to, to get killed. For the rest of the world to understand that when we say no to compulsory veiling, it means that we want to be free, we want to have dignity, we want to get rid of these mullahs. The regime cracked down hard. Because of Masi's activism, she has become a target of the Iranian regime and they actually sent someone to kill her. There were like six or seven FBI agents. When they came to my house, um, they told me that your life is in danger. I was like, okay, tell me something new, because we Iranians are used to it. While I was interviewing Masi, she brought up the fact that I had worn a headscarf when I interviewed President Raisi. I was furious when I saw your interview because I was like, why? When you saw me interviewing Raisi and I was wearing the headscarf, the veil, uh, you were upset. Please you, don't get mad at me. I'm I not was, mad at you. I'm not mad at you, but I, I think you angry. should you should tell us you were angry at me. Oh, thank you so much, actually for giving me the opportunity to say that, because a lot of journalists and female politicians, they don't even get it why I was upset, why I was angry. And can I say something? You're the only one actually asking me this question, because the rest, they don't even want to hear people like me that why, why I was angry. Because look, I lost everything in my life. You know, I wasn't surprised that she brought that up. It's become a big issue in Iran Two women have already been killed over this, and more and more women are taking it off. So I'm glad that she brought it up and that we had that debate. They are dictators. You have to give the platform to women in Iran. You have to hear them. By giving platform to Ibrahim Raisi and wearing hijab, you're legitimizing one of the most barbaric laws, compulsory veiling. And one of the clerics in Iran told me on air, who are you? How dare you to say no to compulsory hijab? So clearly, when you wearing hijab in the name of respecting the law of the land, they are using this to put more pressure on us. You appreciate, don't you, that if I had said, I'm not going to wear the hijab, even here in Iran, that they would have said, well, you don't get your interview then. And then it's us in this difficult yeah. position and of course, we did debate it. It's not as exactly. if it wasn't an issue. Exactly. No, we understood, you, but you did a great job by challenging him. But this is what dictators are really good at: putting women against women by forcing you to wear her job and telling me that look, even I force this powerful woman to I, wear her job. I, job, I did not feel, in my heart and in my mind, yeah. that what I was doing was an act against women. You have to decide whether you yourself are an activist and you want to make a statement, or you're a journalist and you want to do the interview. And I definitely fall in the second category. I think there's so much value in going to a place, interviewing officials, if the price for that is to put that headscarf on, even though I'm opposed to it, I would still want to get the interview, bring it back, and put it on 60 Minutes, which is what we did.